So one thing I want to say, which is really going to annoy somebody right now, keto is not for weight loss. No. It is not for weight and loss. And that's hard. Welcome to Keto Beyond the Couch, episode 263. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are two, two crazy, crazy ketos. ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome. If you're new here, please say hi in the comments down below. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics. And every Monday, we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch because life exists beyond the couch. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and X. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time I get my nails did for Easter, you'll be alerted to it. I love it. all the different spring colors. I am loving it, and I know that, like, Easter will be over by this time next week. Right. I'm, like, I'm still in the spring mode. Right? Well, spring just started. Spring just started. That's right. So, so we're taking this to Christmas. No, speaking of next week, so yes. let's give you a few channel updates. First of all, we are not live. We are alive, hopefully. So when you're watching this, if you're watching it when it goes live at 10 a.m. Eastern on Monday, uh, we will actually be in Orlando yeah. hanging out with the Bear family. So excited about that. Living beyond the couch with all of their, their kids, with the exception of one. Mm -hmm. Haley's still away, but everybody else we're going to be visiting with. And I feel really honored that we are a part of the last spring break before Ruth and Max graduate from high school. That's a special it's, time. That's really cool. Yeah, so we are hanging out with them this week in Orlando. Super excited about that. We're also going to be with Matt and Sarah. Yes. They actually also coincided with this with the fact that Sarah is having a tea party yes. in Orlando next week. I believe Sarah and Nancy are putting and it Nancy. together. We're going to have to miss it because uh, it birthday. is Caleb's birthday. And then Saturday or Sunday, rather, is Easter. Wow. And as soon as we go to church, we are going to head out, visit Peyton for an hour or so. And then we're on the road for close to a month. Like that, that's... Boggles the mind. March has been a very, very busy month. You yeah. know, I mean, you put two holidays... Things will calm down when we get back. In a single month. You you hope so. Well, I have it. no plans for... Right. Well, we have the low-carb cruise the last week of... Or first week of June. I guess last week of May into the first week of June. Um, but we'll be home for a little while. Super excited RV about that. RV Unplugged. RV Unplugged. May 29th. Super excited about that. Very excited. So, yeah. So, um, we'll still have videos coming out this week. As a matter of fact, Wednesday. Make sure right now. If you haven't done it, I want you to right now. Pause the video right now. Head down below. First of all, while you're down there, hit the like button on this video. If you're not subscribed, first of all, why not? Please. Please subscribe to the channel. It really does help build our channel when you subscribe. But most importantly, you want to hit that bell button so that you're notified when videos come out. Also, that if we do giveaways, you're notified if you won. But on Wednesday, we have a recipe video coming out. And I am super excited about it because this is something that I have wanted to try to make yes. for a couple of years. And we're basically recreating something that a lot of us have bought in stores and it tends to be really expensive and also a lot of times doesn't have great ingredients. So I'm super excited about Very that recipe excited video. About this. So you're definitely going to want to see that as soon as it comes out. Uh, so really excited about that. But then a Thursday, we are probably going to still do our live stream. We're just going to do it from the Airbnb. We're going to try okay. anyway. Uh, and then next Monday, Keto Beyond the Couch will once again be pre-recorded. Because we'll be on the road. Because we will be on the road to Elkhart, Indiana. I don't know where we're going to be on Monday. The goal is get ourselves to like the border, Florida, Georgia border, Sunday night. Monday, get in the car, probably stop somewhere in Nashville. And then we need to be in Indiana no later than Tuesday night so that we can pick up our new RV on Wednesday. Now, we're going to be in Indiana for probably about a week. So once we get there and we get ourselves situated, 
We're going to reach out to some folks up in the, that area, like the Elkhart, Indiana area, and see if maybe we can do some kind of get together over the weekend while we're there. I would love that so much. Now, uh, two more things. One, we have an egg contest going on in our Mighty Networks group, and we have extended voting for that until Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. So Wednesday is very important. We've got a new recipe coming out on Wednesday, and you got to get all of your entries in for the egg decorating contest on Wednesday. So I'm like super excited about that. And then there's a number two thing, but I've forgotten it since I began talking. <laughs> so when it hits me again, I will share that information. I'm going to give another shameless plug though. Go for it. The shameless plug is it's not too late to sign up for the 2KK cruise. No, not so at all. So December 8th, we have the 2KK cruise. I'll put that up right here. It's sail away with 2KK December 8th through the 14th. Six nights, Royal Caribbean cruise on Oasis to the Seas from Fort Lauderdale to Coco Cay, Jamaica. Still right now, Labadee, but it may change. No speakers, no keto police. It's all about friendship. I just remembered. What I was going to say is we have no name for our new travel trailer. So we could call this travel trailer. I thought we were calling it Eleanor 2.0. Eleanor 2.0. But I would like to yeah, but I, I guess bring it, it to our community. Okay. And see what you guys think. Should we keep the name Eleanor or do you have another suggestion? You don't want to use Josh's idea. What was Josh's idea? Oh, Voldemort? Oh, Voldemort. I am not <laughs> driving around in something called Voldemort. I appreciate the suggestion. I totally get it because, yeah, we have not shared. <laughs> what we're getting. What we're getting. We want to, excuse me, unveil that yes. and, and really we're share We're going to be you. vlogging this entire trip. Multiple yes. videos for both of our channels. So. Speaking of the 2KK cruise, yeah. I did want to mention, I am already researching for cruises for next year. Awesome. I have not spoken to you about this, but I am curious. Do we want to do... Well, I assume that we're doing it some more. Yes, but do we want to do like a four-day cruise next year, a longer cruise? Um, do we want to maybe look at a different cruise line? Let us know down in the comment section. Should we figure out a way to do two cruises? Like do a four-day cruise and a seven-day cruise? Like two in the, in like the do, year. Like do one more towards the beginning of the year and then one towards the end of the year. I, I want your input, okay? Because what I would have to do is to get the best prices right now, I would have to basically arrange the group and not even ask anybody to sign up because it's a year away and, you know, we have other things. But I would have to put a $50 deposit out of my pocket down on every single cabin that we want to reserve for both of those to lock in the prices. Next, like October, November, like last week, October, first week of November, first two weeks of November, probably like the first week of November, there are three amazing cruises that we can take out of Fort Lauderdale really? or Port Canaveral. And uh, they're really amazing cruises. They're four night cruises. In and 2025. Here's, in 2025. So okay. that would be like the shorter cruise and maybe do a longer cruise towards the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. But I want everybody's opinions. We have three options for three amazing cruise ships on Royal Caribbean. And I can get them all for relatively the same price. You want to know what they are? Yes, please. Symphony of the Seas, which is a newer ship. Mm. Wonder of the Seas, which at the time of recording this video is the second largest cruise ship in the world. I really wow. want to go on Wonder of the Seas. Wow. And Utopia of the Seas, which isn't even built yet. It's launching this summer. We're actually traveling on it in January. Yes. But those are three giant Oasis class cruise ships. And that are, reasonably priced. They are going to be super. We're looking at ocean view balconies for like $1,300, $1,400 and an inside cabin. That's total price, by the way. Wow. And inside cabins of right around $1,000. But I need to book that now because they just put those ships into the Florida area for next fall. So you're and saying. And I want to reserve it. When you so say. So I don't know which ship to book. When you say $1,300, that's for two people to go. It's like 13 depending on which ship and the date. It would be thirteen to fifteen hundred dollars for two people. for two people in an ocean view balcony. Not thirteen hundred each. Thirteen hundred together. Total. And you're talking about on the newest cruise ships. The fact that you're going to be able to get Utopia of the Seas that cheap, wow, is like insane. Especially because it's it, the ship will be a year old. And I think one of the reasons that, that, because you have Star of the Seas launching, yeah, next. 
the first last week of July. So it might be bringing down the price, but before those prices go sky high, like just to give you an idea, if you go to book Utopia of the Seas for this October, you're looking at like $3,500 for an ocean view balcony that's for four like, nights. That's like in half. Now, and that one will be sailing out of Port Canaveral. Would it be a different port? We'd have to go right? up to Orlando. But you need to let us know down in the comments section. We're gonna put it? a poll in Mighty Networks. Should we book Symphony, Wonder, or Utopia? Which one do you wanna go on? Let's jump into Keto Beyond the Couch. We're gonna start off with our Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. This is an inspirational post that we found in our Mighty Networks group. If you're not a member, please go join. It's completely free, members.2crazyketos.com. And uh, if you wanna support us financially, you can do that by joining the Meatheads group in there, five, 10, or $25 a month. And I will give you a little hint. In addition to Rachel is in the process of doing a basically free course for the Meathead group. Yeah. So if you're whether five, 10 or $25, she's doing a free course on. We're talking about stress response management. How to reduce and manage your stress. So later on, that may be a paid course for everybody else. But right now she is giving it to all of our channel supporters completely free. But while we are on the road next week, Rachel's going to be doing some live streaming while I we're driving will. inside of the Meatheads groups. So if you want extra live streams in addition to the ones we do during the week on here on YouTube, you can go join that. Completely optional. It's a way to support the channel and you get some extra content. But all of our main content will always remain free here and our main Mighty Networks group for community will always be free. So let's jump right into this comment. And it was from Sarah. Hey, Sarah. Sarah put up this little post that how to get my body to release happy chemicals, dopamine, complete a task, eat good food, and get enough sleep. Oxytocin, play with animals, give a compliment, hold hands. Serotonin, be in nature, meditation, get sun, mindfulness. And endorphins, watch a funny movie, exercising, and laughing. I love that so much. And the fact that there's no wonky side effects from any of those things. I think that we have all sought to get that dopamine hit, that oxytocin hit, that serotonin hit, right? And a lot of foods and drinks and things kind of promise these things. We've had medications promise these things, but these are all natural, beautiful ways to increase those and levels. And you get to enjoy life. Exactly. I just realized something. Yes. When we move, when we move. Yeah, when we move. We will not be putting wood floors down because a 120 pound dog you can hear and wood her. floors do not go well together. So if She's you, not ruining the floors, but if you hear pitter patter, it's, it's her. She likes to pace a little bit um, at this time of day. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna move into our subscriber of the weeks. These are inspirational posts. People who have had some successes on keto, we ask you all the time, please share your story. Your story is really important. It does two things. Number one, helps remind you of where you came from, but more importantly, it inspires other people. When you share your story, there's somebody out there right now that thinks they're all alone. They think nobody else gets what they're going through. And when you share your story, you help them to realize they're not alone. It allows them to identify with you and helps them along with their own journey. So please head over to our Mighty Networks group, share your story. Pictures are optional, but they are encouraged. Yes. Short story, not like five pages, just a little thing of some of the things that have happened to you when you've gotten into the proper human diet. First one is gonna be from Larry. Hey, Larry. Larry said, after several years of prayer, God answered that prayer by introducing me to Barbara Hicks Wilcox Cleghorn on her orientation day in a hospital cafeteria. As I left my dishes on a conveyor belt uh, while exiting the cafeteria to return back to work, God spoke to me and said, that was the woman I have sent you to marry. Hello. About a year of courtship and we married 40 years wow. ago today. I love her even more today than I did back then. She has continued to love and pursue me even when I was at my heaviest of 608 pounds. Now down over 250 pounds, we are back to living life beyond a couch. Yes. I'm so thankful to God sending her to me. So thankful she has put up with me for over 40 years. Also thankful to Joe, Rachel, and the Two Crazy Ketos family for this support, encouragement, and love that you all have given us to regain our health lives again. 
I am so looking forward to spending this day with her after some of us guys gnaw on God's word, some meat, drink some great coffee, and sharpen one another. Love you, Big Barbara. Thank you for over 40 years of love together. So thankful, so safe, still ketoing on. Blessed by God. You're going to make me cry. I know. I can't look help at this. it. Oh, Larry and Barbara, you guys look absolutely wonderful. And this is such an answer to our prayers that we're seeing people be able to enjoy their loved ones, their partner in life for longer. That's the goal. That's the goal. When we, when we say till death do us part, we want that to be a long way off, don't we? I mean, we want more years together. And boy, Larry and Barbara, if we have been a blessing to you guys in any way and help to encourage you so that you could have a longer marriage together that that blesses our heart that's the gift well we have to stay alive because like we got a late start that's we've right we've only been married for 16 years that's so right i want to get to 40 years me too so that means we're gonna have to live a long oh, time happiest of anniversaries to you both okay next one we have is from Lori. hey Lori. Lori said the left is my first week sober right is today at 30 week 38 yes. weeks sober I had been most lo mostly carnivore for over a year when I quit drinking and finally decided it was time to cut out all the poison. Oh, Lori, I am so stinking proud of you. That is so wonderful. And I really appreciate the fact that you're sharing that this was a stair-stepping journey, that this was getting one thing situated and then moving on to the next goal in your life. And like, you have got to be so incredibly proud of yourself and we are too. Wow, yeah. you're you're amazing. Let's take a quick fade to black and come back with the comments. I'm still crying about Larry and Barbara. <laughs> that is so stinking awesome. Okay, first comment we have off of YouTube is from April. Hey, April. April said, I have lost almost 50 pounds and kept it off for yes. almost five years. I've never tracked or counted anything. It is possible. Uh, thank you. Thank you for saying that because uh, we do get a lot of pushback of like, you don't know what it's like, especially in our you know most recent decision to not weigh anymore. But I got to tell you, there's just been a lot of joy in our journey since, what was it like? End of November, December. December. It was on December. our it was on our like so our trip, our cruise. December, January, February. We're in March now. So it's been four months. I've not waited. We're at the quarter mark. Still in the same clothes. So I'm like, at the we're continuing to eat keto. Like that's not a decision that we make every day. We're keto. That's it. That's what the way we eat. We're still fitting into our clothes. We feel great in our bodies. Things are going well without the scale. Yeah. So it is possible. And I Throwing thank you that for scale sharing out that. Definitely was a stress reducer. Yeah. It, and, you know, I know it's not for everybody. No, of course not. You, I do think you need to track something. I don't think it necessarily needs to be your weight. I don't not think it necessarily needs to be every bite of food that goes in your mouth, unless you're doing it temporarily to gain some knowledge about what you are currently eating and how much you're eating. But I think you do need to track something, whether it be steps or, you know, just overall, like, ideas of what you're eating. Mm -hmm. But for us, the scale became this thing to live and die by. And I know we've gotten comments on that video about you've put yourself into an eating disorder. Some of the problem actually comes from putting ourselves on YouTube. Yeah. You feel like whether it's right or not you do begin to feel like if I gain any weight, I'm disappointing people. That's right. And that I, I need to do this for other people and to let them see what it can do. But at the same point, that was affecting our health. And all I know is we don't weigh our food. We don't track our food. We're maintaining our weight. Uh, we're More importantly, we're maintaining our size, our energy. I mean, is our weight going up a pound or two? I'm sure it fluctuates because everybody's weight fluctuates. It's supposed to fluctuate. A woman's weight can fluctuate five pounds in a day just because of water weight and hormones. But overall, we're staying where we are and we're happier. I was going to say, we don't have the obstacle anymore. That That's where it can judge. Like if you're somebody that's like, hey, if I have 
a disappointing interaction, if I'm like kind of let down when I get, I step on the scale, that that's how I was. So if I felt like I was disappointed at the beginning of the day, which I, that's how it would go if I didn't see what I liked. Um, and sometimes even maintenance didn't feel like enough. Even if you stayed the same, it, it still wasn't like a pound down. You see what I'm saying? Right. So like, there's a lot of opportunity if you're somebody like me to be disappointed. You don't want to start out the day disappointed. No, we were using the scale literally, like there were times Happy today? where we were using the scale to determine if we should eat for the day. Like that is the worst thing you can do. Terrible. And And we were still doing it. I mean, we were going, oh, I'm up three pounds. Maybe I shouldn't eat today. Like that, that's a really bad idea. Not to listening do. to hunger. Yeah. Okay, next one we have is from Outer Banks. Hey, Outer Banks. My A1C is down from an 8.2 to a 5.0 in two years. Keto, ketovore, carnivore. That's amazing. That's incredible. That's awesome. Just absolutely incredible. I was actually talking to someone earlier today uh, about a good friend of theirs had very, very high triglycerides, like over 600. Uh, very low HDL, very low LDL. And again, this is where people look and go, Oh, low cholesterol. That's good. You know, and, and low cholesterol is not necessarily good. Your body needs cholesterol, but triglycerides of over 600, so many problems can come from that. Heart disease, heart attack. She actually said he was like, you know, he basically had a heart attack, got rushed to the hospital. Uh, now he has to be on blood thinning medication again because all that fast is going around. And then you get doctors going, it's the meat. Right. It's the meat. No, it's not. It's the sugar and the carbohydrates and the bad seed oils. So if they send him home on a heart healthy diet and like pour yourself a big bowl of Cheerios and like, we'll fix this. It, it's it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Yeah. So again, we are not doctors, nurses, or health professionals, but we've done a lot of research on it. Spoken to a lot of people who are doctors, nurses, and health professionals and much smarter than us. And our job and your job is to lovingly educate people. Yes. Because the more the doctors see our results, the more maybe they'll start going, hmm. huh, m maybe, maybe, just maybe LDL doesn't mean heart attack. Right. I mean, there, there's there got to be a reason why the people who live the longest have the highest cholesterol. It can't be a coincidence that also many people who have heart attacks have low to normal cholesterol. So is it possible that it's not just cholesterol that we should be looking at? Worth a dialogue. Next one we have is from Natalie. Hey, Natalie. Natalie said, I've been eating a Whole Foods Keto Lifestyle for almost 14 months. I've lost 20 pounds and so much inflammation. I've been in a stall for eight months after gaining on carnivore. I also intermittent fast 18 six days. Uh, I just had my annual labs and was so discouraged that my A1C went up from 5.8 to 5.9. My fasting insulin was good, not great. My HDL and triglycerides improved at least. How could my A1C go up though? Um, there's a lot of things that can cause your A1C to go up. I wouldn't put a lot of stock in an A1C of 5.8 to 5.9. Yeah. Because they can fluctuate. There's a lot of things that can affect your A1C. My personal opinion is A1C is not the greatest test in the world now that we have um, uh, CGMs. I think CGM is a better idea to see where is your glucose. Because all the A1C was doing is giving you... This was an average of your glucose for the last three months. Right. So I would not, me personally, if it was me, be so concerned with 5.8 to 5.9 because it could just be the time of the day you took the test, what you ate, all those other things. The eight months stall going after gaining on carnivore, I'm curious like what was going on with the gaining on carnivore. We don't have a what lot of information eating? there. You know, how many times a day were you eating? I would personally, especially as a woman, uh, I'm not that I'm a woman, but you're a woman, uh, that uh, to not do 18-6 every day, eat when your body tells you to eat. But Dr. Barry has talked about this. And one of the things, if you are eating mostly meat and you really are avoiding sugars and eating a proper human diet, not eating a bunch of starches and low-carb breads and all the nonsense and stuff, and your A1C goes up, it could be that your red blood cells are living longer which would result in that higher A1C. But what I would do is personally get your doctor to give you a CGM so you can see what's going on. If he won't give you a CGM, use the link down below. Testimonial. For testimonial. And you can go get a doctor to basically write you a prescription 
for $39 or less, depending on how many months prescription you get. Since you brought up the CGM, I would also use the information as feedback as like, notice what happens, not just when you're eating and after you're eating, but what's going on the rest of your day. Because stress can raise your A1C. And remember when you talk about like, you can't lose weight in the presence of insulin, like wait until you see like where you stress out in other areas of your day. There may be something that is stressing you. That's nothing to do with your plate. Like your plate is going great, but maybe things are not going great in your sleep. Maybe things are not going great in your movement. Maybe there's some, you know, hard conversations to have at work. Like there are other areas for stress and that can impact your weight loss. I'm living proof of that. I will say also on the 18-6 thing, that could be part of your stall. Yeah. Because your body needs some change. You may not be consuming enough food in those six hours. So th- there there could be a lot of different things going on in there. Next one is from Vicky. Hey, Vicky, What are your thoughts on the Lumen Breath Analyzer for Keto? Um, I have messed with it. I am not a fan. I don't think it's super accurate. Um, breath meters for Keto can be good if you get a good one. The problem that I had with the the Lumen is it's encouraging people like, oh, you should eat some carbohydrates now. It's not really doing the proper test. If, if you listen, here's the thing. If you want to test for ketones, yes, breath is the best way to know. Am I currently burning fat? They are very difficult to use. And I've seen a lot of people put videos up on Lumen. And most videos that I've seen of people doing it are doing it wrong. Because the ketones, they're in the bottom of your lungs. Yes. The way to read them would be to exhale. We actually have a video on one, but to so exhale hard to get it all out. of the breath out of your lungs. Yep. So, and then before taking a breath, that last, I can't get any more out. That's what goes into the meter because that's going to show you your ketones. Good enough is not going to do it. Keto breath comes from ketones. It means that you are actively have ketones in your breath. So breath is what's going to tell you if you really are currently burning fat, but it's the hardest to use. And the meters are expensive. A good meter, and you need a good one, not the $40 one on Amazon. Um, They're going to cost you a couple hundred dollars, and they need to be calibrated and, and new sensors on a regular basis. So the next best would be blood ketones. Blood ketones are simply the ketones that are in your blood that are not being used, but at least you would know, is my body creating ketones? If there is anything, if it's a 0.2 or 0.3, it means your body's making ketones. Your body may just be utilizing them as opposed to if they if it's a zero, then your body's not making any ketones. But it doesn't really need to be a high number. High numbers on ketones doesn't equate to more weight loss. But I personally, if I were you, I'd, I'd save your money. I am always very suspect of something that is suggesting you go off of keto or you add a bunch of carbohydrates back in. Like today is a high carb day because I feel like- Your body doesn't need carbs. Well, I feel like the addict in me, the carb addict in me is going to treat that thing like a magic eight ball, right? Like I'm blowing in it and I'm hoping like, come on, come on, like let it show. Today needs to be a whole bunch of carbs, Rachel. So that like when it shows up, like, hey, based on your ketone levels, you could like have a couple more carbs. Yay. Awesome. Let me hit like all the carbs. Right. So I think that it can get you into trouble too. Yeah. I just don't think it's necessary. If you want to know if you're in ketosis, just eat the proper human diet without a bunch of overly processed food. Focus on meat, maybe a little bit of veggies. If you want to have something like a keto child once in a while, that's great. But the more stuff like Hey, and I'm guilty of it. Things like Quest peanut butter cups and sure. and packaged cereals for keto. The more you introduce, the more you deviate away from the proper human diet, and the more you're going to have to worry about, am I truly in ketosis? But if you're just eating meat, keeping your total carbs under 20 to 30, no noise. your body's going to go into ketosis because it needs it. And you need to be consuming fat. Don't listen to people who say you can eat high protein, low fat. That also could elevate your A1C. Uh, next one is from Reese's Cluttered Kitchen. Hey, Risa, for me, it isn't the carbs so much as the crap put into products that add carbs. Or you Talking have the breads and stuff. No idea what it is actually. Like Polysorbate 80, my favorite brand of heavy whipping cream added Polysorbate 80 to their cream. Why? 
Costco started selling a brand that looked like it, similar packaging, and they also use it. You really have to read labels. Aldi version of Land Lakes Heavy Whipping Cream has it. Uh, so does Land Lakes. So is ShopRite's version. There is a bowl and basket brand, generic, that does not have it. Organic Valley does not have it. Horizon doesn't have it, but it is $3 more per container. What the heck is it and why is it there? I try and read labels and try to purchase as clean as possible. Question, is there carbs in it? Okay, so first of all, heavy cream, yes. All heavy cream has 0.413 carbs per tablespoon, regardless of what the label says. If the label says zero, it's 0.413 carbs per tablespoon. Now, if the label says more, really look at the ingredients because um, they're adding something that's adding a bunch of carbs. But pretty much all heavy whipping cream is going to have 0.413 carbs per tablespoon. If they label it one, something's going on. Usually the label is either going to say zero or less than one. Right. What is polysorbate number 80? It is an emulsifier. They're using it. It's used in a lot of medications. It's used in emulsifier. They're using it in heavy cream as a thickener and an emulsifier so that the fats don't separate. We consume it. Are there healthier versions? Yes. But even the ones that you're mentioning that don't have it, they have other things in that they're using as a thickener and emulsifier. Usually they put in gums or things like that in it. The better thing, if you can find it, and it is harder to find, is just heavy cream. Most stores only carry heavy whipping cream because people are using it to make whipped cream. That's where the polysorbate 80 and some of the thickeners come in. It allow It makes it fluffy. If you can find heavy cream, many times it doesn't have those thickeners in it. It's just much harder to find. Like the only store by us that I've ever found that has flat out heavy cream would be um, Win dixie mm -hmm. And I don't know if you know this, Win dixie just got bought up by Aldi. <gasps> it did? Yeah, for at least here ski? in Florida. Yeah. Oh, wow. And here in Florida, they bought out all the Win dixies But Risa, you bring up a very interesting point. If you are utilizing some ingredients on the regular. Like let's say you're you're anything, like anything that you're like, hey, at least four times a week I'm using this product or five times a week or daily I'm using this product. Take a moment like and write down all the ingredients that and look up the ones you don't know because we are putting it inside of our body. Do I need it? Do I want it? Just because it's got like it looks like a spelling word challenge word, right? It's worth it, the investment of taking the time to just write it all out and saying like, okay, what is this? You know, some people are using uh, creamers that profess to be sugar-free. They find them in the grocery store. Most of the time they have bad seed oils. So, but I would sit down, like if you're using a, 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 a creamer, you're probably using it every single day, a store-bought creamer. Sit down and write out all of the ingredients. And if there's something you don't know, look it up. Google is your friend. It is. Next one is from Linda. Hey, Linda. I'm so confused about how much fat to eat. I'm aiming for one gram of protein for each pound of my weight. But how much fat does it matter? When I get hungry, it's usually because I'm not eating enough fat. Is there a true guideline? Thanks so much. Um, there's not a true guideline. A lot of this is going to fall under niches N equals one. A, I guess a good guideline would be this. First of all, I don't know how much you weigh. But one gram of protein for your current body weight is probably too much, especially if you're not consuming a lot of fat. A good rule of thumb for protein is a minimum of 100 grams of, of protein. You're, I, I would say never go below 80, um, but 100 grams is a good minimum amount of protein. Probably could go more, but starting at 100 is a good place. If you want the bare minimum amount, and I mean bare minimum, and if, if this number for you works out to be below 80, um, raise it up. But you would take your current body weight in kilograms. Mm -hmm. Your current body weight. Now, I, I live in America, so I'm sorry. Uh, we probably should convert to metric, but we live in America, so I do not know conversion of pounds to kilograms off the top of my head. But if you took your current body weight in kilograms, so for example, if you weight 200 pounds, whatever that works out to be in kilograms, that is that amount in grams is how much you should eat as a protein. And that is the bare minimum. And as Dr. Barry said, it is most likely not enough. So if that number comes out to be 75, I would still raise it to 100. But that's where your protein should be. The other number you could look at is 
there's these those silly charts that have not been updated since like the right. 60s and 70s. Be it's your like, goal this weight. is your ideal body weight, which is kind of silly because what if you're what if you look like the rock? Or what if you look like Robert? Okay. If you're full Keto of muscle, savage. yeah. If you're full of muscle, like that ideal body weight doesn't work either. But whatever those silly charts say, this is how much you you should weigh. Take that amount in grams. So if it says like you should weigh 130 gram, uh, pounds at your best weight, use that amount as, as your amount of protein. For fat, you want to eat at least one gram of fat to one gram of protein, but probably more, probably closer to two grams of fat. But that's where you have to do the N equals one. Start with one equal one to one. Uh, if you're still hungry in between meals, up that fat a little bit. Um, if you're gaining, if you're losing weight too quickly, up that fat a little bit. If you're not gaining, you, you do it for two or three weeks and you're not losing any weight, maybe lower it just a little bit. Again, don't lower it but beyond one to one. Uh, if you're in that situation, you probably need to do some type of a reverse diet because you've slowed down your metabolism. So hopefully that helps you out. Next one's from Terry. Hey, Terry. Next month will mark six years of doing the PhD lifestyle. It is never too late to learn new things. In 2024, I moved away from fasting, both extended and intermittent, to three meals a day. I was never very good at one meal a day, but two was my go-to. Now that I have two months into this new eating time frame, three meals per day, I will say for me, it is so much better. I have better glucose control and I don't find myself needing to make sure I overstuff myself because it'll be a long time till I get to eat again. Listen to your body and do what works for you. I love this post. I love this post so yeah. much. Terry D is awesome. Like you need Terry D in your life. Um, She'll be on the 2KK cruise. That is worth coming on the cruise just so you can hang out with Terry. And I'm not even lying. Like that is for real. But what she says brings up a really good point. You actually, I know a lot of times people who only eat one or two meals a day, sometimes they're doing it because they're afraid of food interactions and they're trying to minimize the amount of like time that they're interacting with food because they're afraid that they're going to eat too much. So they don't want that third meal like Terry is enjoying because they're afraid I can't be trusted with a third meal. It's bad enough that I feel like I need to eat too. The problem with that is, is that sometimes you're still coming to your plate with a thought of deprivation, right? Everybody else is getting three meals a day and I am only getting two meals a day. They also get snacks. And as a keto person, I don't get snacks. Not to mention the fact that this plate is filled with keto stuff and everybody else is having more fun on their plate. Do you see what's happening? So that, what can happen with that is in those one or two meals, if you're somebody like me and can eat a large quantity of food in a sitting, I can overeat because I deserve this because I'm so put upon that I only get two meals a day. So sometimes for someone like me, if you are capable of having that script in your mind, it may be better for you to have three meals a day and be able to sit down and be like, I don't need to eat the horse and the wagon because I will have another regularly scheduled food and three meals of food tomorrow. So like, I don't have to eat like there is no tomorrow. You just gave me a great idea for another five minute video. Okay. I think we're going to record that after this. All right. Um, but here, here's the thing. My personal opinion is on a regular basis, OMAD is not a great thing, especially for women because of hormonal issues. We're different all day long. So I don't think that you can get the amount of nutrition that your body needs in a single meal. I think two meals a day is the better place to be, maybe three meals. My opinion is you should be eating till you're full when your body tells you to eat. So that means sometimes you're going to eat two meals. Yes. Sometimes you're going to eat three meals. And yes, sometimes you're only going to eat one meal. You know, are there ever times you only eat one meal? Absolutely. Are there times you eat two meals? Yes. Are there times that you eat four meals? Yes, I have eaten four meals. And it really has to do with full and hungry. The thing that I have trained myself, if there's anything that I've tried to put a fence around things, it's to, to acknowledge with an actual voice response, you're, I'm full. Yeah. I'm full. I need it noted. 
right? We, I, it, it's funny, like Atomic Habits, one of the things they say is like, point at it, say it out loud, note it, note it. So when I am hungry, I'll be like, I am hungry. If it's been a couple of hours since I'm eat, I've eaten, but I still feel hungry, I will say that out loud. I will say like, still, still full, feeling good, still full. You like, know, just notice it. A while back, Rachel did a full book study on Atomic Habits. Yeah, it's great. I don't know if we. I don't think we have that in a playlist. We, need I, to we did it as a course, I think. We just. But it was every Wednesday. You should do another book course. I'd love when that. When we get back from Indiana, I am you in. should do another course. You need to let us know down in the comments section, what though. Book? What book should Rachel do as a book study? Yeah, that, that would be good. Where we do a weekly or maybe bi-weekly live stream where you everybody can jump in and read I can, the book. I can spoiler alert you that the month of April, our community focus, don't tell anybody because it's not out yet. We're still in March and that's the pursuit of more creativity in March. But in April, it will be the pursuit of more reading. I'm out. <laughs> You're going to love it. It's going to be great. Can I audiobook count? Audiobook absolutely okay. counts. And I have a feeling that we're probably going to enjoy some audiobooks when we're on a majorly long trip. Yeah. Let's take a quick fade to black. What do you mean as soon as you hear there's reading, I'm out? <laughs> I don't like to read. I don't like, but listen, there's a long history behind me. I love not learning. Like, I love to learn, but I hate to read. So, and part of it is my personality. Part of it is my learning process because there are different learning styles and I do not learn by reading. I learn by doing and watching. For example, when I was in high school and college, uh -huh. I was pre-med in college. After I had my accident, I switched over. I was going to become a doctor. If you gave me a course, like a science course, like biology, yes, just reading, uh -huh. I'd get a C. If you gave me that same course, biology, chemistry, anything like that, and there was a lab involved with it, I'd get an A. Because me, I opposite. learn by doing. I need something that ties it in. It's like, I don't know how to work on a car. If you give me a manual for a car and say, take this car apart, never going to happen. Give me a video of somebody else doing it. I could take that whole engine apart, put it back together, and now know how to fix a car because I, I learn as I'm taking, oh, this does that. that. That's just how I learn. I have a question. Okay. Would you want Peyton to hear you say, I don't like reading, no. anti-reading? No. So maybe if you would not say that thing to but your granddaughter. But I like granddaughter, audiobooks. Oh, I'm not saying Do you want her to just listen to audiobooks? I'm not. The she's most... watching right now. Oh, she's watching. Okay. She's got to be. So quick story of why I don't like reading. Because when I was in high school, we had a professor that would give you a book. Okay. Hamlet. It was an English professor. Right. Okay. Here's Shakespeare's Hamlet or mm -hmm. Macbeth or whatever. Yes. You need to read this book. The test on the book would he would take one obscure line from that book, not like the most famous line in the book, right? And you had to remember the little exam booklets? Like they were yes. like this big, blue. I do. Mm -hmm. You had to have one completely filled, minimum one to two books explaining who said the quote, what was going on, everything leading up to it, everything that happened after it. So I couldn't, because it was an obscure quote, you would force yourself to read this entire book in like a day or two. Mm -hmm. And it turned me off of reading. Before that, I loved to read because I liked the stories. But now all of a sudden I began like, I wasn't reading for enjoyment. I was reading, trying to memorize an entire book, and it made me hate reading. Okay, so... So I, if you're a teacher, please don't do that. I, I appreciate what you're saying and your journey. However, that gentleman is still robbing you. I know. You're allowing him well, to continue holding fortunately, your love for reading hostage. Fortunately, we have audiobooks. Right. There you go. And there's nothing better than listening Stop to... Stop letting him rule your life. There's nothing better than listening to James Earl Jones read the Bible. Oh my gosh, that's my fave. We're Samuel oh. Jackson. Okay, so I did want to say I, I just we th I just thought of this five minute video. Okay. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification because it'll probably come out this week. But I don't want to go change. We're gonna film it right after this. We should start. I, there's no way you're gonna ever do this. We should start every video. You have to wear the same exact shirt. Right. And then because right, this way you never matter. know when we film a video. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is you always want to dress crazy. I love. Close. Right, but see if we always if you always wore a purple shirt and I always wore just a black shirt, 
We can record a hundred videos and go one after the other after the other. Not that we're ever going to do that. And you would never know what day we did it because we always wear the same clothes. Okay. Should we do that? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next one is from Jesse. Hey, Jesse. Question for Joe and Rachel. Our children love water parks and we're trying to live life beyond the couch for them. Yay. But our feet kill us walking barefoot at water parks. Mine too. Uh, since you two seem to be frequent theme parks and live in Florida, can you recommend a good comfortable brand of water shoes, aqua socks, so our boys can get the most out of their time at the water park? So honestly- I did answer this one. You answered it, but I figured somebody else might want to know. Yeah. Um, Rachel wears like water socks. We get them on Amazon. I'll leave a link for one down below. I, I find Crocs work really well in water, in mm -hmm. water parks. Listen, all of the water parks, they don't let you wear those shoes on the ride A lot of anyway. times they have little cubbies. Right. So what you want is something that's comfortable, that's easy to get in and out of. I've tried everything out there. Another brand I like is Cross Kicks, but you can't easily get them. We did have a pair that Rachel, I got for Rachel and they ripped. So it kind of turned me off of my pairs are great. Yours are doing good, but, but it, it had, it had, it was basically because it had shoelaces. Rip. Yeah. So and I had another laces. one that the piece broke, but they replaced it. But Crocs, Easy to get off and on. You can put them down on the bottom and you can get them anywhere. And they make them like tieable too. Because yeah. I like the sneaker look, but it doing a water shoe work. But if you're walking around in a water park and you're going to take them off and on and off and on, I think Crocs or, or the, the water socks. The water socks. Especially here in Florida where the pavement gets hot. I really enjoy that at theme parks also because maybe I want to go on a water ride, but not all of the rides are water rides. So water socks pack up even in a fanny pack really easily. And so I can just change out right before a ride. They're also better for your, sh your feet than shoes. Like I, I I'm, I'm barefoot as much as I can in the house or, you know, I, I, Rachel will even get mad at me like, put on a pair of socks, put on shit. And no, it's better if you're not wearing shoes, it's better for your feet. A lot of modern day shoes and sneakers cause feet problems. Right. So if you're wearing just water socks where it's just a protective barrier across nice, the bottom. Nice and flat. You know, that, that is actually better for you. And, you know, one of the things we love about Volcano Bay, which is Universal Studios Park. Uh, water park is they actually have these misters that keep all of the pavement wet nice so that cold. your feet don't yes. get hot. Uh, next one is from Melinda. Hey, Melinda, I'm three weeks in back to this lifestyle and I've halved my Madison for my fibromyalgia. I will cut it back to no meds in two weeks. This is what my journey awesome. is all about. And like, And that is such a great perspective. Somebody out there right now, if you're just getting started, hear again Melinda's journey, like how quickly she's seeing changes when it comes to medication. So like we've said, we're not doctors, we're not nurses, we're not health professionals, but we definitely advise that if you are starting out on this keto journey, first of all, get your hopes up that that, that prescription can be a thing of the past. It is a thing of the past for me, and I'm so joyful that that is the way that my life is now. Um, but changes can happen quickly. So make sure that you are taking your blood pressure if you're taking blood pressure medicine. Make sure that you are are checking your, your glucose like often as you are starting a keto protocol. Especially if you are a diabetic that's using medication. And have your doctor's number on speed dial so that you can talk with them about deprescribing in a positive way. We've seen people not require their, their high levels of blood pressure medicine pretty quickly yeah. and it can present itself like, oh my gosh, they had like a, 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 a fainting spell. Well, what is that? It was the combination of blood pressure medicine and not needing blood pressure medicine anymore. Yeah. So one thing I want to say, which is really going to annoy somebody right now, keto is not for weight loss. No. It is not for weight and loss. And that's hard. Keto is a weight optimization diet. You will probably lose weight on keto. You can also gain weight on keto. Uh, you can use it for either. What keto is is a health optimization diet. It is going to optimize your health. The, the overall, if, if you ask me at the Collaborative Science Conference, the, the conference we came from in Vegas for the Citizen Scientist Foundation, the overall theme, the, the, the one thing that came out of every single speaker, no matter who they were, no matter what they were talking about is, so many of the current medical problems that we are seeing in the United States and in the world 
can be directly linked to your diet. And most of them, if not all of them, can be linked to sugar. Right. I mean, when you look at, we had people, schizophrenics that are no longer a schizophrenic. You look at somebody like Rachel who attempted suicide twice and had, was on all kind of mental disorder pills, no longer needing them. And the only change that she made was cutting out the sugar. So, you know, something that happens a lot of times when you're exposed to kind of that information, we're seeing doctors that are like, you know, we, we were talking to cardiologists, you're talking to gynecologists, you're talking to people that are oncologists, like all of these people in the space all presenting about like what keto has done for their patients and they've amassed so much data that you're standing there thinking, well, yeah, if I had a life-threatening disease or a life-threatening concern, I can see the need for tightening up the ship and like really doing well and sticking to keto. Let's not wait. How about we not wait for a life-threatening situation, right? We don't want that. That right. is not the goal. What I would love is a testimony of people who are like, I am just on keto and enjoying confidence in my health for years and years, yeah. right? And it, that happens to, when you're talking about maintenance, what do you want for maintenance? What do you want maintenance to look like? I would like to maintain good health for a long time. Because see, here's the thing is we look at like these different medications we go on and, you know, people wait until, uh, you know, I've got this major issue. Right. It's like a lot of people, it's not until like I'm near death where I turn to God. Right? Yeah. It's it you see the same thing. Like, okay, doctor said I'm on death's door. Let me look at my diet now. Keto's not gonna fix everything. We can take ourselves so far on the standard American diet that even keto is not gonna fix it. It may help, it may stop progression, but wouldn't it be better to stop the progression early, not yes. wait? Like you may not be able to turn everything around. You you know, every once in a while you'll see this story about so and so had a heart attack while on keto. But what were they eating before? Is it possible all of their heart and, and cardiovascular issues existed before they went keto? And maybe keto helped it a little bit, but it was it was too late. There was a lot of healing that's gone on in our bodies for six years after 40 years of not eating well, right. right? Like eating inflammatory things. And I can tell you, I am the daughter of someone who did not get that second chance. I know that my father knew something was wrong just from the morbid obesity in itself and all of the medication that he was having to take. But I think the entire family took that attitude of we're waiting for like the ambulance ride. Like we're waiting for some sort of, you know, warning the warning, the warning is happening right now as you're watching this video. This is your warning that keto makes a difference, that what you eat makes a difference for better or for worse in your health. This is the warning because the warning that my father was hoping for, he really truly ignored. And that was that thought of, I wonder if I should stop what I'm doing, right? right. Even if it was a fleeting thought, we've had those fleeting thoughts, right? When right. we were over 300 pounds. That was the warning. He did not face that warning and he did not get a close call heart attack. It was the heart attack that ended his life. There, There is an old joke. I've heard a lot of pastors actually tell the joke. Like someone's in a flood and they're standing on top of a steeple, right? right? Have you heard this one? Yes. And it's like a helicopter, a boat. And and then finally they when they die, chewing it away, and, and and they're like, I thought you were gonna send help. I did. Right. I gave you all of these different warnings. Newsflash: We're all gonna die. Right. How long do we want to live? And and what quality of life do we want to have? Uh, next one we have is from Dawn. Hey Dawn, I went to the doctor and the doctor said no more monkeys jumping on the bed. No, I lost more weight finally, and my A one C lowered from six point two to five point eight in. Three months. Wow. She's been very encouraging and told me to keep doing what I've been doing. Thank you for sharing that, Dawn, that not every doctor is displeased that you are on keto. There are plenty of doctors 
that are celebrating with you when they see that the change in nutrition has paid off. Yeah. Don, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor is in our Mighty Networks group, share who your doctor is and where you are yes. so that other people can find out. We, we almost need to amass a list. I know there's some lists out there, but, you know, they're probably not updated. But I'd love that for us to start amassing a list of this is my doctor who approves of keto or who is supporting me on my keto lifestyle. That's great. You know, idea. I, I was talking to my sister earlier and we were talking about the problem in modern medicine is not necessarily the doctors. The doctors are doing what they were taught. They are influenced heavily by big pharma and big food, but they're they're doing what they were taught in medical school and with their training. And when they go against the grain, they lose their license. Right. I don't blame the doctors because they're being they're using what they were taught in medical school, which by the way are funded by big pharma. So they learn right out of the gate just prescribe medication medications. My problem with doctors is where they where they fail to educate themselves. They fail to see the evidence, for example, somebody like Don and having all these great results and then continuing to go, but that doesn't work. But here's my results. But they're like, no, because according to this study, that doesn't work. So that's where I don't blame a doctor until they just become ignorant. And when they decide that, like, hey, I know that there is a million studies out there that that are now showing that eating less sugar and eating less processed food and eating a whole foods diet and meat is not going to kill you. There are all these studies that are showing that and they all go, no, that's not how I was taught. So I'm going to ignore that. That's where I blame the doctor. But that's where it comes into us to lovingly yes. educate them and, and, and be an example for them. And there really are a lot of doctors that care because at the heart of a lot of doctors, certainly ones that we've met during our keto journey, they're a scholar at heart. They're a yeah. student at heart. They're a learner at heart. And they get excited about new information. So what you're wanting is to, to talk with a doctor and see that this doctor seems teachable, seems approachable, seems like they want to open a dialogue. This isn't a speech that they're giving you. This is a dialogue that, they, that they're that they having. You are in charge of your own health. So if your doctor is vehemently opposed, find another doctor. Right. Just you are in charge. They cannot make you take anything. They can't force you to change your diet. They may say, I don't want to be your doctor anymore, but at that point, it would probably be a good thing anyway. Uh, next one is from Sean. Hey, Sean. I had a major non-scale victory yesterday. I got Yay. off the phone with my nurse at the cardiologist's office, and they told me they would not recommend me getting the injection statin drug for lowering my cholesterol. I told them that the other statins were causing muscle pain, which they uh, kind of were. They said that they hope that we can just lower it through diet and exercise. Wow. Cha -cha. My total cholesterol was 310 and my LDL cholesterol was 241. My triglycerides were 63 and my HDL was 56. So I'm thinking I'm pretty good cholesterol wise anyway. I agree. That is awesome. I mean, I, you know what? You'd have to look at all of your other numbers. But again, cholesterol is not a big thing for me. As we said earlier, People who live the longest, it came up at the Vegas conference, people who live the longest tend to have high cholesterol. And, and I, I want to live a long time. I really appreciate that you're seeing this. You're seeing a lot of, this is this is statin drugs trying to like get, be pervasive, right? right? Because I think more and more people are getting it like in a pill form and then just not taking it, right? So uh, you're seeing more and more the pushing of injections yeah. at the doctor's office. Next one's from Sheila. I'm going to read this one. Hey, Sheila. I started making my health a priority. So this non-hugging teenager would have to hug me when I'm old instead of taking care of Wow. Me. I have been on a struggle bus with my health, dealing with two-year weight loss stall that encompassed multiple thyroid struggles, gallbladder removal, and perimenopause hormonal shift, which altogether caused me to put back on 40 pounds during this time. Finally, getting my hormones, including thyroid, dialed in, continuing to trust the process for my health, going to the gym five times a week, walking 12,000 steps a day every single day. I am happy to say that since no September 19th last year to today, I have managed to drop 26.8 yes. pounds. I weigh less now than I have in over two years. Wow. The struggle is real. For those who are dealing with your own struggle, just know that the weight loss doesn't start in a gym. 
but in the kitchen. Great. It starts with your blood work and making sure that you are healthy. And if there are things that you need to work on that you are doing your own investigations and learning so that you can be your best advocate. Wow. I have learned so much about my body and about my health over the last five years. Nothing would ever make me go back to the old me and risk not being able to give not my non-hugging daughter the biggest hug whenever I want wow. for the rest of my life. You are worth the effort and the time to make sure you are here for the long run and that you age gracefully rather than in pain and with regrets. This kind of sums up this entire so Keto Beyond the Couch. Flipping awesome, Sheila. Congratulations. And thank you for sharing. The, yes, there was a lot going on. You're talking about thyroid. You're talking about gallbladder removal. You're talking about perimenopause. All of that is on top of just the fact that losing weight is hard. Yeah. Like just losing weight with none of those things is hard. And you've got all of those things. So you're bringing me losing weight is hard and the potential for three more excuses, legitimate hard excuses why I should just be disappointed and like just stop what I'm doing because I'm just sad. Yeah. But you don't do that. You say you are going to the gym, you are walking every single day, you are continuing to consistently eat keto. You're challenging all of us with this post because you're saying like, I clawed my way to health. Why? Because Sheila wanted it. You want it and nothing is going to stop you. And that is what I want to see more of, right? In all of us, you're challenging me, Sheila, by saying like, you want it, it is there. It may be extra hard to get there, but it is there if you are going to fight for it and I'm worth fighting for it. And so is this hug from this non-hugging teenager. I love that so much. Next one is from Aaron. Hey, Aaron. How do you feel about kefir? Mm. I hear it is good for you, but I'm concerned about the sugars in it. Reading online, it seems like people say it helps A1C and blood sugar levels. Any thoughts? I don't know about the blood sugar levels and the A1C. Well, they're hand in hand. A1C is just going to tell you what your blood sugar on average was for the last three months. The good test would be using kefir and then monitoring your blood sugar for a while. There's a good video for you. Yeah. Um, using a CGM meter. That would be a great way to analyze things. I would not be concerned about the sugars in many kefirs because what's happening is, is those sugars are getting eaten up by the good, healthy bacteria and cultures. That's what's making it a kefir. I would be leery and weary of a lot of the store-bought kefirs because sometimes they're adding in crappy ingredients right. and extra sugar. We actually have a video. It's kind of old and cringy, but it is pretty easy to make your own kefir. Very, very similar to making your own yogurt. We should probably redo it because yeah. now we use a yogurt strainer because back then we were using like... Nut milk bags. Nut milk bags. We were using nut milk bags. Right. So, but... With nut milk bags. You can make your own kefir and it is delicious and yeah. you can use it as both like the cream cheese as well as drinking it. So... Overall, it can be beneficial, especially for your gut biome. More and more research showing your gut biome and what it can do, especially for fighting off uh, diseases, viruses. I'm not going to say which viruses, but we might be able to infer that. I don't want our channel getting demonetized. Um, but more and more research is showing that we can like help by feeding the proper things and kefir is something that's good for that. Yeah. So is a lot of fermented vegetables, like kimchi, making sauerkraut, sauerkraut. And kimchi. You just have to be watching the ingredients and it's always better if you can to make your own. Like sauerkraut's super easy to make. We actually have a video on that. It's fun. Next one is from Laura. Hey Laura, diabetes, gone. Inflammation, gone. Weight, still hanging on for dear life. Help. I love that. Like that. That is, Laura, like that is the cry of everyone's heart. Like, thank you for just saying in a sentence what a lot of us have right. gone through, which is, it is frustrating. Like, I know, like, yay, diabetes, check. That was the most important thing. Inflammation gone, check. Like, that was the next most important thing. The weight still hanging on, it is. Your body's probably just healing. A pain in the butt, yeah. though. I get it. 
it, I'm proud of you for having it in this order. Yeah. Diabetes. That that was the most important thing to get rid of. Then you got the inflammation. Now we'll work on the weight. Yeah. It may take time. Like we said earlier, keto is not weight loss. Keto is health optimization. Weight loss is a side effect. Sometimes we have a lot of healing to do before we lose the weight we want to. And we also many times, and I know we are both guilty of this, have this unrealistic number in our head of that we're supposed to weigh that somebody told us. And to me, it's more important to get to where you feel comfortable without ever looking at a number. What if you got down to a size, I don't know. What, zero. Zero. What? I don't think most people aspire to be a zero, Rachel. Okay, six. Six, okay? So what if you got down to a size four, a six, and an eight, but you never Who ever stepped on a- Who do appreciate? Keto, keto, yay, keto. So, but what if you got down to that size? Yes. Like, maybe you've been a 16 your whole life. Try a 24, friend. And then you get down to a size eight. Okay. But you never once stepped on a scale. Are you going to care what that scale says? No, because I'm. What if you went from a 24 to a clothes. size eight, but only lost five pounds? Would you care? I did. I did. It was super frustrating, right? To deal with me. Right. Because oh, oh, I was like, I, know, I don't. I, was being nice. I did not like the fact that I lost inches before I lost pounds. Right. I wanted to see it on that scale because society said. You and had to weigh a number. You had to weigh a number. And that was a thing that I had been, you know, f- fretting over my entire life. When I was 12 years old, that Christmas, my father got me a diet book. I know he meant well. He wasn't trying to hurt my feelings, but he bought me a diet book, like how to lose weight. And in there, it had like what a girl my age should weigh. And I have been chasing that number, though I am no longer that girl. I'm not 12 years old, right? right. Things have changed. Um, but you're still chasing that number that it said, yeah, but you're that height. I have said this that height, many times. How high I'm supposed to be, this how much I'm supposed to weigh. I would love to look like The Rock. But that would mean I have to weigh about 80 pounds more than I currently weigh. And be Samoan. And be Samoan. Also. That's that's the science point. But we're no, working on it. But this is something that we're guilty of. How many times have you turned on a movie and seen an actress and go, I wonder how much she weighs? Do you think I weigh less? I'm usually. Right? I mean, we're all guilty of that. I, honestly, I'm not thinking how much she weighs. When but, I look at I mean, at we her, have done that. You know what I'm wondering? Why am I not pretty like that? Why am I not hot? Why do I not look like that? It's but like, I. but I don't understand why we even have to bring us into it. That's right. Can they just act and be acting and us enjoy the movie? Yeah. Stop trying to do that, Rachel. Next one's from Mel. Hey, Mel. Okay, so I have a huge piece of pork belly and I want to make pork belly bites. Yes. What is your favorite method to make that? Okay, so our absolute favorite method- Smoke it like a brisket. Is smoke it like a brisket. Smoke we have a like video a on it, but I'll, I'm going to give you the, the quick, here's how to do it. Okay. If you have a smoker or you can do this in your oven as well, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to cover the top with some spices. Like we love the Redmond garlic pepper. Fat up, fat down. like the- Fat up, fat, fat up. up. You're going to cover the whole top. You might even want to put some like X slices in there. You're going to put it in your oven and you're going to bake it at th- or in a smoker 300 degrees until you get to an internal temperature of about 165 degrees. Okay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to put it in a foil boat. So what a foil boat is, you're going to take aluminum foil. And you're going to wrap it, but not the top. You're going to make a boat and make sure it's nice and tight on the edges. So like, fold up the like edges. Like a box. Like a box. Well, with no, with, top, with no top. No lid. And again, smoker or an oven. And then you're going to go until you get an internal temperature of about 205 degrees. You'll know because you're going to be able to take a meat probe, an instant read thermometer, <gasps> and literally hold it up, drop it, and it's going to go right through. It, it should literally be like a not even a hot knife through butter, like a knee, a hot needle through butter, like where you shouldn't even feel it. That that's how it needs to go in. No restriction at all. Now I want some. You pork now belly. have pork belly that's got the same texture of a really well cooked brisket, and oh. it tastes amazing. So good. Then, if you want to have bites. Cut it into pieces and put them in an air fryer. Oh, so now it is like a buttery soft center with a crunchy outside. Yes. So it's amazing. The other option is any, it should always be low and slow. You can also sous vide. And then when you want to have it crunchy on that crunchy outside, 
hit it with a blowtorch, uh, or put it into an air fryer. The biggest mistake that people make with pork belly, as a fly is flying yeah. around in here, the biggest mistake that people make with pork belly is they try to cook it fast. Like just cut it up and throw it in an air fryer. Is it edible? Yes. Is it tender and melt in your mouth? No, it's chewy, and it, I don't find that pleasure. I don't either. It's so funny. So yesterday we were at a restaurant with the kids, with well, two of the kids, with with Anthony and Caleb, and they were serving pork belly. So the kids are used to the way we cook pork belly. Mm-hmm. So at, so we were like, yes, give me a couple of you know pieces of they that. They were little cubes. They cooked them fast. That that was not slow cooked pork belly. I could have told you as soon as because you notice I didn't take any, and you know why? Because they're walking around with it on a skewer. You would not be able to put it on a skewer. They have a skewer. They're holding the skewer here, and the pork belly is just on the skewer. I'm like, nope, nope, that's not it. Because if if that was cooked properly, low and slow, it would just they would just fall off. So it was funny. So all of us, me, Caleb, and Anthony, all like slice into it, and we're all like together. So. Oh no. And and you're so disappointed because once you've had pork belly this way, it, it's like it it, it, it it should literally melt in you should be able to eat it with no teeth. Any other way. Yeah. You it should ruins. be able to eat pork belly with no teeth. Yes. That that's you still need to make it the way that we learned to do it on the cruise. I, I'm I'm working on that. Okay, one more. It is from George. Hey, George. George just signed up for our cruise. Said, I have been watching a number of the videos and listening to the podcast religiously since I found this community. In this, is this an obsession or a substitute for disorder? Hey, I eating? like it, George. Either way, I just watched the video for the first two Crazy Keto's cruise, which I highly recommend if you are considering the cruise or can't decide. This may help. One thing I notice is how much my hairstyle matches Joe. I it agree. does. I like the shirt. I and, like and your like glasses said, too. Uh, George, I think you have those same glasses. Possibly. This George is crazy. literally just signed up for the cruise. I'm, I'm super so excited. excited that they are going on the Two Crazy Kiddos cruise. I I gotta tell you though, you look like you're similar in age too. He does not. He's wearing he does a not shirt. Look 70. He's wearing a shirt that says he's 70 years old, but you look like you are 53 years old, sir. So, so congratulations on that. That is going to be the end of today's Keto Be on the Couch. Thank you so much for joining us. Sorry that we are not live. Again, we're going to try to be live this Thursday. Next Monday will be pre recorded, but Rachel will be in the chat for that one. Hopefully, we have internet while we're driving. I hope so. Uh, make sure you go sign up for Mighty Networks because we're going to be popping in and out of Mighty Networks the entire time we're traveling. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, please do us a favor. Take a look at some of the videos we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take on the most recent video and put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.